Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on the June 2023 Mathematics. Today we will discuss all those questions related to the integral equation. Myself, Dr. Harishkar. You can simply follow my YouTube channel and you can scan and join my WhatsApp group where you have discussed various kind of the question with the help of shortcut here. Now what will be here, we will continue the, our lecture series where we have discussed uh, the LPP question, ordinary differential, Markov chain, partial differential, calculus of variation and many more related to this June 2023 paper. Moreover, we all already discussed the various PYQ questions from the year 11 to 23, all with the, all the different topics in here. Now, today we will start with the integral equation. There are three questions which is asked in the integral equation. This question is related to the 4.75, ID is 100. There is one another question that is the ID is 4.101 uh, question is 4.75 and there is one question related to this ID number 047 which is of the three marks. So if you closely look about all these integral equation as I mentioned in my previous lectures there are basically three categories there are question asking that. The first category is when the limits are from 0 to a variable. Second category is when the limits are from A to the variable here is a 0 but here is a x a and the third category is when the limits are my constants so remember if you look about these three questions the limits are my constant limit is my constant and limit is my constant so basically the question is arises from this part third where k is my kernel if you write this kernel then the one of the simplest method as i describe you we always convert this matrix this system into this ax is equal to b. Now once you know ax is equal to b then you can easily find the value of the x by solving this equation or by any other way. So what is the a what is the b? So remember this is the a this is the b but uh, you may think about that how you can remember this formula that's a very simple. If I uh, recall for you here the matrix a is a square matrix if I call as a 2 then it's a 2 cross 2 1 minus this lambda is nothing but my here alpha 1 1 1 minus lambda alpha 2 2 this is a pair of alpha 1 2 so I consider minus of lambda alpha 2 1 you can see here what is the alpha ij alpha ij is nothing but the integration from the limits a to b first index is for the g g i f of j what is the g and f? You can see g is the function of the t, uh, f is the function of the x. Like if I call as kernel is my x into y. So this is my f, this is my g. If I consider this as sin x cos t, then this is my g, this is my f. Now we can try to solve this and moreover if this f is my 0, then we call as the homogeneous, otherwise we call as the non-homogeneous. So let's start with this question, how you can approach them. So a question is very easy, you just think about the problem. If lambda 1 is less than lambda 2 are the two characteristics polynomial of here, again the limits are my here. So if you look at the first case, what is my kernel x comma t, if I open this, it is my sin x cos t plus cos x sin t, fine. Now you can see there are the two terms. This is the function of the x we call as the f1, this is a g1, this is my f2, this is my g2. So I can convert this into ax is b. So what is the size of the a is 2 cross 2 because it has a 2 matrix. So what is that? I need to compute alpha 1 1, I need to compute alpha 1 2, 2 1 and 2 2. That's very simple. So how you can do that? You can take the integration over the limit 0 to 2 pi. Remember always first is index for the g, second is for the f. So it's a g1 f1, g1 f1. If you multiply them, remember you have to make them index as a similar g1 x f1 x. So what is that? It's a sine. If I multiply by sine, if I multiply 2 and divide it by 2, it will be my sine 2x over 2 into dx. Fine. So what is the integration of this? You can see it's a 1 over 2 minus cos 2x over 0 to 2 pi. It's my 0. 
look at this alpha 1 2 0 2 2 pi first index is my g so g1 and f2 so it will be my cos square x dx so what is the integration of this you can see i can take 1 by 2 is outside so the integration of 1 plus cos 2x so what is the integration of this is nothing but my pi rest are 0 alpha 2 1 g2 this is my g2 into f1 so it's a sine square sine square x dx over this limit again the answer is my pi alpha 2 2 that is a g2 and f2 it is again if i multiply by 2 and divide it by 2 it will be my here and answer is 0 so what is my a you can see a will be 1 minus lambda is my here into alpha 1 1 0 1 minus lambda into alpha 2 2 0 minus lambda times alpha 1 2 pi minus lambda times alpha 2 1 is pi fine whatever is now for finding the solution we have to take that determinant as a 0 so what is that it is nothing but 1 minus this minus this and 1 so what is that determinant is 1 minus of here so what is the value of this lambda is a plus minus 1 over pi fine so what is the meaning of that i can get lambda 1 is less than of this so i can get this as minus and lambda 2 as plus 1 over pi fine this is the co solution corresponding to the first part now we can do the same part for the second case here integration is 0 to pi so i can uh, rub this screen so what is my here for the second case, it will be my cos x cos t minus sin x sin of t. So look at that. This is my f1. This is g1. This minus of sin is my f2. This is my g2. So integration is now this time is 0 to pi. It's a uh, g1 f1. g1 f1 cos square. So what is the integration of the cos square? If you remember. What is the integration of the cos square is nothing but my 1 over 2 or you can say it's a pi over 2 if you integrate them it's a pi over 2 is the answer alpha 1 2 g1 f2 g1 f2 if you multiply them it is sin 2x over 2 negative 0 to pi and you can see the answer is 0 similarly alpha 2 1 that is a g2 f1 again the sin 2x is a 0 alpha 2 2 alpha 2 2 is a g2 f2 minus sin square x so it's a similar as minus pi square by 2 so what is my a corresponding to this 1 minus lambda is nothing but my mu 1 minus mu of here that's a pi by 2 minus 0 minus 0 1 minus minus plus pi over 2 now find the determinant of this you will get a square minus b square is 0 so what is my mu is my plus minus 2 over pi so therefore mu 1 is because mu 1 is less than of this it's a minus 2 over pi and mu 2 is my plus 2 over pi now look at the answer so mu 2 2 over pi mu 2 is always be greater than of lambda 2 so this option is cancel out second option is cancel now look at the first option this then lambda 1 because it's a minus 2 over pi so which is here and then of this so you can see which is 1 so you can see the first option is the correct option now you have to take the modulus value the difference between the mu 1 minus of lambda 1 if you take the difference it will be 1 over pi what is the difference of this it is again 1 over pi and you can see both the options are correct this option is cancel out first and the third are my correct option of this example so it's a very simple trick always remember you have to write in in terms of the ax is going to be where a is a matrix corresponding to them here look at one more example again this is the example which is given to you but in this case k is not given to you but the property is my k is less than equal to, less than one strictly less than one fine and x and y is my here 
what kind of the k x comma y that's always that means this is the bounded function fine now what is the meaning of that if you look about this statement there exists a function g such that this has a no solution so remember the limits are constant i have to look about this system when it has a no solution we all know when rank of a is not equal to rank of this y that's only will happen now look at that if i simply consider 2 cross 2 then when the rank if i say this is so if i say this value will be 0 then only the rank of a is 1 and whatever the b we can say the rank of a by b if i say this is my non zero then it is my 2 then only it has a no solution so firstly we will think about whether this term can be a zero so what is that this is my term this is my term fine so what is the lambda you can see the coefficient is my 1 so lambda value is my 1 in this case so now can you think about any of the example any of the kernel so that this value becomes a 1 it can never be a 1 alpha 1 1 can never be 1 alpha 2 2 can never be 1 why because kernel is strictly less than of the 1 it is not equality it is not equality now look at that how you can approach this question first part i can simply consider any of this p. say 1 sorry I, I can't take as a 1 because it's a less strictly less than 1 so what i can do is i can simply take x because x is my less than 1 so it's a is equality so i can again can't take that i can take x by 2 which is a less than of the 1 now if i consider this as into 1 so this is my f this is my g so it means my ax is equal to b a is only 1 cross 1 matrix because it is only 1 matrix so 1 minus alpha 1 1 so what is the alpha 1 1 g1 into air x over 2 limits are my 0 to 1 so the answer is 1 by 4 so if i substitute here 1 minus 1 by 4 that is a 3 by 4 so 3 by 4 x is b what is the meaning of that you can see ax is equal to b when determinant of a is non-zero it means rank of the a is my n so clearly say that it has is it a no solution no so it means if i consider a single variable then we will get a no solution but here there exists that's a cancel if you think about that i can take one more example for you look at that if i consider this kernel x plus y over 2 again it is a strictly less than 1 no because x and y both are here so i can consider this as a 3 then definitely it will be less than 3 so i can return this as k by 3 into 1 y over 3 into 1 so what is that this is my f this is my g1 this is f1 this is my this is my g2 and this is my f2 fine then what is my alpha 1 1 what is my alpha 1 1 g1 f1 3 x by 2 so x square by 6 over the limit 0 to 1 it is 1 over 6 fine if I found the alpha 2 2 alpha 2 2 is my here so it is y square by 6 over the 0 1 it is again 1 by 6 so if I look at this matrix lambda is my 1 so 1 minus 1 minus of this so clearly says rank of a is 2 which is not less than of the n it means no solution will not be existence so that that means this no solution is not possible because kernel is my strictly less than 1 if kernel is equality 1 then it could be the possible then you can simply take the kernel of this is my 1 then clearly say this is my f this is my g so alpha 1 1 will be my 1 and then in that case it will be 0 okay look at that uh, similarly look at that there exists a function which has infinitely many solutions so when the system ax is equal to 0 has infinite many solution only only when rank of a rank of a condition b is less than of the n fine so if i consider as a 2 cross 2 then it means rank of a 
need to be less than of the two. What is the meaning of that? Determinant of a must be zero. But you can see that the diagonal entries are non-zero. It means determinant is can never be zero. It means rank is always be two. So it can never be a infinite many solutions. Now look at that. This integral equation has a solution for infinitely many g. Definitely why? Because rank of the matrix is my two. So what if the rank of this matrix is my number of the variable, whatever the value of the b, rank of this is always be the same as that of this. So once both are same, what will happen? Either they have the unique solution or they have the infinitely many solutions. So it has a solution for infinitely many g, correct option. The system has a solution for the unique if this is there. So both are my correct option. So this is the way you can solve this problem in a very simple manner. Okay, look at this another one, which is related to the differential equation as well. And k is my kernel. This is the part B, only one correct option is there. That's again a very simple. Now, in this case, kernel is given to you. So what I can do, I can substitute this value of y in here. And then we can find the kernel. Otherwise, I can substitute the first option in the kernel, so y is my 2, I can break this interval from 0, so t times 1 minus x, y of dt, plus 2 times x to 1, x of 1 minus t, y of dt. Now I can find the y double dash, and we will check whether it is equal to 2 times of the y. What is the y dash? I can take the partial derivative with respect to x, it is my minus of t, y of t into dt plus upper limit, x, 1 minus x, y of x into 1, lower limit 0, plus 2 times, if I integrate with respect to x, here, th by using the Leibniz rule, so plus upper limit 1, that's a 0, minus lower limit x, 1 minus x, y of x into 1. So clearly see, this will be, cancel out. Now you can take the second derivative, it's a 2. Now this function is independent of the x, so the partial derivative will be 0 plus upper limit minus x y of x into 1 minus 0 minus plus 2 times, again this is independent of the x, is a 0 plus upper limit 1 derivative will be 0 minus lower limit 1 minus x y of x into 1. So if I open this bracket minus 2xy minus 2yx minus minus plus 2xyx. So it will be cancelled out minus 2yx. So you can see it's satisfied here. Now the only thing we have to satisfy whether y of 0 is 0 or not. So what is the y of 0? 0 to 0, 0. When x is 0, this value will be 0 is here. y of 1. When x is equal to 1, this part will be 0. When x is 1, the limit will be from 1 to 1. So answer is 0. So it's satisfied here. So the right answer is my, this is the correct option. So uh, if you want to write the second option, again you will get the discarded. So because there is only one correct option. So first option is the right answer of this example. So I hope you can simply learn the tricks how you can solve this question very simple manner. Remember, I already described the various lectures in my PY questions of the integral equation. You can see my here, PY question of the integral, PY question of the integral, June and December here. I solve all those questions with the help of this, this shortcut tricks, AX is equal to B. You can see that lectures for the more details so that you can solve this question in a very, very simple manner. So I hope you can simply learn the tricks from my this video as well. I hope you can like, share and comment my video. Thank you very much students. Happy learning.